Hey, and welcome to episode 237 of the F Reality Podcast. All right, folks, I've got something to admit. I've been using a doppelganger the whole time. In fact, <laughs> we all have. It's all spies and fancy toilets with jet spray for your bottom here at F Reality. And in full disclosure, we're not here right now. This is a pre recorded episode. Ghastly, I know. Halloween might be over, but we, my friends, are still ghosts. For today's Zippy Snippy podcast, here are some teasers. Like a sick kick? Enjoying torturing patrons? Well, we've got the MR game just for you. Tinfoil hats are back in fashion for the super-powered elitists out there. And Boz also shipped some extra battery life to the Quest 3. What? Yeah, he did. But let's not forget his elves in the house either. Winding in his fishing reel, Mr. Tech will express a few thoughts about gaming life and give tips how to catch a blue whale. If you fancy detonating something bigger than a turkey, this guy Fox. And here's the crew that you know and love. She is the nicest lady anyone's ever known. She smells like periwinkles with dawn somewhere echoing in the foreground. Buses full of school children chortle with glee every time she posts a new YouTube video. Uh, really, she should wear fairy wings more often because just look at this angel. Did I say she's nice? So nice. It's the nicest death reality member we've ever had. Definitely going to heaven, but not anytime soon. Plenty of years to wash away all that youth. This is Adam Bombati. Hey, Adam. That here you just you know what okay before we started this recording he starts off our skype call with hi ho hi ho <laughs> so don't let all that nice introduction fool you that's just a, i thought it was about me you know? <laughs> i'm the best of spirit sure sure uh I got to think ahead How are you doing, here. Adam? So I, um, oh, I recently just finished, uh, I hope this wasn't on in Jose's releases. Sorry if I like spoil it for you as, as we do every podcast, I feel like. Every podcast. Um, but I just finished uh, Vampire the Masquerade Justice, which oh. definitely is out now. The November 2nd is when the release date was, I'm pretty sure. Um, so, but I... I liked it. I feel like the, uh, I'm not going to spoil story or anything. The story was all right, but um, it's more about the stealth mechanisms. And I'm not a stealthy person. Like I prefer to go in guns blazing when I can. So the, the few games that actually make me want to restart to do like a clean stealth run are, are pretty far and few in between, but this is a good one. Um, and I, I feel like, I, I mean, we don't know what Assassin's Creed is going to look like yet, but this feels... Very Assassin's well, creed -y. Well, may, or maybe we do. I don't know. This <laughs> We're is... playing with the past and future now. <laughs> I, I get... There's a temporal flux getting super confused. this whole podcast. Yes. But it, it does, um, it, it sort of fakes open world. Um, and you, you do a lot of rooftop stuff, stealth. Like, you're in Venice. So I feel like, I bet you this is kind of similar to how Assassin's Creed is going to run, too. Where it, it feels open worldly, but it's more like, you know, you go to open a door and then that's a loading screen to get to another area but you're in the right. outdoors so i'm curious to see how how close they are to each other and if i'm right but i will say damn they have i hope that assassin's creed doesn't do this the loading screens are long and annoying there there are long annoying loading screens and i hate it Especially from, from outside to inside is that anywhere what you're so um, you go through a door well just if you're anywhere? transitioning into like a new area or if you completed a mission and you're going back to your main hub Loading screen, loading screen, and what would you play it on? What'd you play? Uh, on? The Quest Three, yeah, but it's going to be oh, out for okay. PSVR two as well. Or I mean, it is out for the PSVR two as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, but otherwise the combat, the powers, like there's oh my god, there's one power where you can just you boil your victim's blood, and so Holy it's shit. sort of like it, it's violent, but the blood's cartoony looking if that makes sense right that makes it family friendly yeah I, exactly. I guess but but you can actually yeah. you, there's one power that's called cauldron, cauldron of blood where you have like this like a blood fountain that comes out of your hand because you're like sucking their blood out and then eventually their head pops off and it's it's fun it's and you can eat rats if you if you run out of human oh, blood nice. you can always just pick up a rat and just go <laughs> and there you go it's awesome <laughs> so are you boiling their blood while it's still in them yes. or do you take it out and then in the kettle well, oh, you don't need a kettle. No. I mean, I get that's too much work. You could just 
while they're standing there, just take advantage of, just, of that. Yeah. For those who just joined, so this is uh, you know, <laughs> this is a game. <laughs> Definitely a video game. Vampire the Masquerade uh, Justice. So I, I like it, though. If you um, have kind of been looking for, I don't want to say open world, because it's, it's like fake open world, right? But uh, right. it's, yeah. it's still satisfying. I, I really enjoy it. Don't go in it looking for the best story ever of all time. Just go in looking for a nice, fun, stealthy, very murdery cartoon B- blood, but a lot of blood, uh, actually a good time. And rats. <laughs> and, <laughs> and rats. The thing I always have with these kinds of games, and I don't know because I've not played it yet, or maybe I have, <laughs> um, like Skyrim solves this, at least the modders solved it, is that uh, you always have adults running around, zombie games, you know, vampire games, whatever, but there's like no kids. And it's like, what? And the same thing is true for like NPCs. It's like you go, you typically have all the same height NPC running around, and it's like, is there... So is there var- variety in terms of your uh, targets in this game? Like, can you just basically you asking, asking, can I murder kids <laughs> yeah, I was in saying, this no game? Kids, can, can you can't I murder, murder them. That's why. But that, um, it would have been better if there was more. Of a, you basically have either uh, mortal grunts or um, immortal vampire grunts or homeless people and rats. <laughs> 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 So not a lot of variation, but you know it's interesting. <laughs> you can boil them, you can pop them, yeah. Then rats, you can drop them, or you well, can put them in a box on the streets. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, yeah, I mean you can't patch in kids now. After you just can't. That's definitely a way to end your company, right? <laughs> Fast travel. Don't, don't bring a kids patch. That'll that's that's not. Not good. You can leave get it, it to the mods. <laughs> leave it to the mods. <laughs> exactly. But I don't think we've had much in the way of vampire games in VR uh, across. I'm trying to think of mostly zombies. Have we? Yeah. Have we had any? Rowdy, do you know of any from years back? Vampire games. Maybe that's the next wave shooter genre. Vampire games. <laughs> really? I, I've had a few pirate games. We've had plenty of zombie games, but vampires. Mm. Almost zero. I hope chat yeah, but if is I, like. If I, if I want a vampire game in VR, it has to be like old school vampires, like Nosferatu or something like that. Yeah. Like where you just creepily scare people. That's what I want. Well, I mean, there's probably like vampires or like varieties of Resident Evil, but not like a vampire centric yeah, game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're right. You're right. I want to turn to a bat. Yeah. I can't remember. Was it Resident, Resident Evil 5? Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's great. So super, super nice. Adam likes popping heads off. Eating uh, rats. Don't forget that. <laughs> right, breaking my heart. Breaking my heart. Uh, next crew member is a buzzing bee making honey and taking money. Large server arrays of sticky honeycomb. He's, he, he's there uh, with his bee tendrils covered in gooey network transmissions. He's Johnny on the spot. And with his swarm, there's no match. Years ago, you might have caught him at Best Buy selling you on those Radio Shack dreams, but today he's here with us, a stalwart hero, our champion. He faced the horrors and tested karma. Reincarnation is true, because if it wasn't, Jose would be so very dead. Over to you, my man. How you doing? <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Oh, man. Excited, dude. I've been... It, it, this is probably one of the very first uh, podcasts that I get to be like, I've been doing nothing but VR. Like hey. I have been, oh dude, it's been absolutely awesome. It, it, it's like the the VR community is seeing uh, all of the cool stuff happening in the all-in-one headset space, and now oh. we're starting to see the momentum on the PC yep. VR side. Um, yep. I just I wanted I, I was something has been on the top of my head, but first things first. Uh, huge shout out to Mboka. Mbo- I think I'm, I'm hopefully I'm pronouncing the username correctly. But Ambucha or Ambuka has been collaborating with the virtual kombucha. desktop team. Yeah. Kombucha. kombucha, yeah, definitely yeah. kombucha. Yeah, M Kombucha <laughs> so has been collaborating <laughs> with the virtual desktop team, and they actually released a uh, compositor um, called VDXR, which is pretty much a Steam VR list OpenXR alternative, also an alternative to the OpenXR runtime that oculus uses so it, it's it's really cool um the virtual desktop team and all these people saying you know what we don't we don't we don't want to support valve but we also don't want to support meta and they created their own 
uh, straight compositor. But the reason I wanted to bring this up is it's uh, uh, my own personal test. I'm already seeing a about a 10 to 12 frame uh, rate difference Ooh. comparing it to standard PC VR. We're talking about just incredible margins of potential, especially this being a initial release. So um, really exciting to to uh, just get right back into VR. I actually got a viral tweet actually this week where I was actually testing it and I was able to do uh, HDMI capture oh. onto an OPEC XR overlay, which, which means I, I had a Nintendo Switch actually physically connected to my capture card oh, and it was yeah. streaming that using a headset. Cool. So reprojection all across the board, something that you would expect a lot of latency. Yeah. And thanks to this uh, VDXR uh, compositor, it, it, the, the delay was non-existent. Uh, wait, wait, and I, wait, wait, hang on. I, I'm, as usual, Jose, I'm, I'm yes. completely lost in what's <laughs> happening. I've heard switch, <laughs> compositor, cable. So you had a switch yeah. connected, you were capturing off HDMI, off Correct. your switch in a dock? Yeah, so I, I had my switch connected to a capture card on my computer. Yep. And then using the playback uh, application so I can see what's on the on the capture card, I had that as an actual overlay mm. on the compositor on OpenXR. Oh. So, it, so it you was were basically really cool. showing it to your PC and then using PC VR. Showing it to myself. Correct. And were you wired or wireless to the headset? It was wireless. Uh, I was wow. using wireless 6E. Yeah, it, it, wow. it was. It's. Probably one of the, the coolest experiences, being able to get a full uh, 60 frames per second without any noticeable delay in playing Super Mario Wonder, which is a platformer that, you know, uh, there's a lot of precision with buttons that you expect with these kinds of games. And being able to not deal with the latency that I was expecting in, right. in, in VR, has it's just huge game changer. I, it immediately started, you know, opening up so many ideas. I, I have so <laughs> many, like, a list of crazy tech stuff I want to do because now we have, yeah, it's so cool having such a, a low layer uh, uh, XR. So uh, what is the compositor's job to do that in such a way that it's low latency and, and without it, you wouldn't be able to do this? I'm trying to yeah, understand so, where yeah, it Yeah, so at the moment, helps. the way the OpenXR works at this very moment is the, the, the quickest way is through Steam VR. Which means that Steam VR's hooks are pretty much integrated into it. That means the store, the the way it handles different headsets. Um, the realities are that OpenXR heads act in order for something to be classified OpenXR, there's certain, I guess, rules that means that you don't need Steam really to access OpenXR. Any headset that is adheres to those standards can access it. That's how you can run VR applications on your computer that are designed for Oculus Quest and and vice versa. So it's really just a, a, a agnostic approach to accessing your own VR game library. That means if you download stuff from itch.io, you don't have to you know go through Steam, which is really cool because we, we often think of Valve and Steam as the only option for VR, mm -hmm. that there's certain markets that don't have access to VR at this very moment because of Steam's regulations. So this actually opens up a, a now access for third world countries to actually get OpenXR and start experimenting and tinkering. Brazil is one of them that I'm really excited about. I That's actually uh, reading in the forums, a lot of people from Uganda, uh, places that they don't have access to, to the Steam VR or, or Steam uh, application download layer. It, it, this is, oh, this opens what? it up. Why? Why is so? It's restricted based on based on country. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. So Steam, Steam, Steam is a DRM, right? So there's yeah. certain regulations and, and 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 ways that you can acquire these these uh, applications legally. Um, and certain and there, that's where commercial restrictions come into play. If you don't have the the legalities in order for you to build an OpenXR application or or game or experience, then you're kind of on your own. So this actually mm -hmm. opens up an opportunity for somebody to say, hey. You know, Steam VR is not here available, but this is a open XR game, and you can buy the headsets that open up arcade possibilities. It's it's super exciting when you really think about the future potentials of a, I guess a the closest thing to an open open source, I guess yeah. open XR uh, approach to virtual reality. This is really a metaverse API layer, I guess is the best way to describe it, and. 
virtual desktop is delivering. So it's it's super super oh. kudos to them over there. Got to go buy me some kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Hopefully, I'm not I'm not like breaking, destroying that name. But, uh, uh, kombucha uh -oh. is good. Like I love yeah, kombucha. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what they meant. So. <laughs> Well, that is that is a lovely highlight. That you, you've all uh, surprised me so far. This is this is this is pretty cool. Good. Especially given we're recording this like four days after the last <laughs> podcast, which is long, and um, <laughs> you've all managed to get busy, which is fantastic. Uh, I wish I was as busy as you guys have been. Um, all right, now onto this guy. He's not a nice guy, and I'm not giving him an intro. This is Rowdy Guy. Hi. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> I'm so confused. How you doing, no, Rowdy? How you doing? Standing there, standing there, issuing orders to all exactly. of us. Uh, how, yeah, how, that's, how are you getting that's, on? That's that's how I am. No, I'm doing good, actually. I also have a, a pretty interesting uh, or eventful week so far. Uh, yesterday, I went to uh, a, a generative AI event that was organized by Google. Uh, so mm -hmm. it was like kind of like a way for them to introduce entrepreneurs and, and people with the uh, uh, business ideas, like try and convince them to go more into the Google Cloud system. And uh, I mean, it was interesting. Or not, not a lot of new stuff that uh, that I saw there. But um, I mainly go to these kind of events to meet people. You know, to 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 get to talk to some other people that are also in the similar field or thinking about similar things as I do. And it was really interesting because I met this guy who was uh, he was a co-founder for uh, a health uh, uh, app, basically, where they were trying to use AI to try and summarize and contextualize medical documents. But he introduced me to um, a, a weekend project from Andre Karpati. I don't, I don't know if you if you know Andre Karpati, but he's uh, I mean, he was he was a research scientist and a and a, a I think a founder even of OpenAI or a co-founding uh, member. So he's, he pretty much knows large language models pretty pretty solid. And after that, he also became the senior director of AI at Tesla for the uh, the auto vision or the autopilot. Uh, I don't know how it's called exactly. One of those two. Yeah. Uh, so for a uh, computer vision, mainly um, trying to determine um, you know self driving cars. Now, the interesting part, a weekend project for him was basically uh, using Llama 2. So Llama 2 is one of the larger language models and trying to bring that down to a size that is more workable for, you know, um, basically a C, like a very dumbed down computer, like a, which just a CPU instead of like, you know, these bigger models, like for example, the regular Llama models, you have the 7 billion parameter model, 13 billion parameters, 70 billion parameters, but you need like not only to train these kind of models, you know, you need you know, hundreds of hours on, on very expensive equipment, but then to inference from those kind of models, you need pretty beefy PC as well, you know, or a beefy server to try and get, you know, prompts from there, send prompts to that, go through all of the weights that those models have, because they have, like I said, they have 7 billion parameters or 70 billion parameters. And, and what he did, and I found that really interesting, was basically bring that down to pure C. So it's a 700 line C file. Uh, and of course, you don't have C, seven... sorry, C, C as in the code? The yeah, C. Yeah, yeah. just okay. a, the, a C file. So it's just pure computer code. Um, and the, the interesting part of that is that it's, he only made a 15 million uh, parameter model, so much shrunk down in science. But what he found is that for very specific purposes, or he found like it's based on other researchers as well. I, I'm not saying that he's the only one who, who did this kind of thing, but he, he, he built off work of others, is that if you, if you have a very specific kind of goal that these you know, smaller models that are trained on these bigger models, uh, often have a very good uh, result. And uh, what he did was he, he made like a little application to show, you know, diverse stories. And the guy that I met was using this again to like for a sp very specific purpose as to like kind of sort of, um, you know, train a model specifically on medical documents and then have that medical jargon and have an algorithm that was could run on like, you know, a very small instance in a server, uh, like a Linux server, just on a CPU. Uh, and then could like inference and you know, like text docs from that and do that at a speed faster than, for example, ChatGPT. Because you know, you, you know, when you enter something in ChatGPT, it takes like a couple of seconds for like words to appear. Mm -hmm. And you know, with these models, like it, I mean, it depends on how big you make them, but they often have like a hundred to uh, fifty to one hundred tokens per second. So tokens are often like words or you know sometimes combinations of words. So 
you know, really fast producing these kind of tags. And I find that super interesting to hear that. Uh, and the reason why I found this super interesting is that I recently finished the Stormlight Archive. I talked about this already a couple of times on the podcast. Uh, there's in total, there's four main books. So you have The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance, Oathbringer, and Rhythm of War. All of them are over a thousand pages, so they're pretty hefty books. And you have several like novellas in between that are more like you know shorter stories about like what happens in between, but they take an enormously long time to write. So you know the first book came out in 20, 2010, and um, they're now predicting the next book to be out in twenty twenty four, which is way too long for me. So I'm <laughs> suggesting I hope that the author is listening. You know. Download this like <laughs> this baby llama model on your PC, you know, like get it going, you know, because I I need to I need to know what's going on. Like, I can't I can't wait another year. You want I, to I train can't. their they want you want them to train this focused language model on their previous history so they can get End another the book out faster. Yeah, say finish the story and bam, no, nobody will know. Nobody will. Know. <laughs> I won't say anything. <laughs> You know, like oh, just train it on that. You know, it's a couple thousand it's so pages. Funny. Just get it done. Because you mentioned you mentioned this, and my brain jumped to having Counter Strike running on a USB key in university, where <laughs> you could rock up to any PC on the network, slip this thing in. They didn't have any anti USB protocols back exactly, in the day, yeah. so as long as you could find a port, you could then run <laughs> Counter Strike in the library or whatever. And man, that felt good, but. This is even more dangerous than that, man. You oh, could yeah. have a very specifically targeted model. I mean, I, I've been dealing with Llama um, because of the Ray-Bans, right? And having to have that tether to the internet so that you can reach the servers to actually process your inquiry and have it come back down to you um, is, <clears throat> is unfortunate. It would be great if you didn't have that necessity, right? And so what you're talking about is essentially... Similar to that, um, yeah. obviously it wouldn't give you the wide open ocean of everything you ever could possibly imagine. But for use cases that are very simple, think about like Google Maps. You know how Google Maps works where you can download a segment of a map. So if you go offline, you can like, you still have all of New York City to every nth degree and you can search for pizza restaurants or whatever. Like with this, you could literally say, okay, well, you know, all the things that I've asked it in the last year, pre-process all of that, load it onto, you know, some tiny CPU running in this frame of glasses, and I can just run with it on the go. I mean, that's all possible. It might even be flashable onto the current day device if they do it right in a small enough, you know, even a year from now. So very exciting, Rowdy, um, yeah. as, as and nerdy there's as it a lot is. Of Google as well, they're, they're pushing towards, instead of making models bigger and bigger, they're kind of like trying to push it to make it like a little bit smaller as well, because that would make it... Very, of course, there's always a market for these very large models for companies like Facebook and for companies like, you know, OpenAI and like, because we need those kind of models to inference from and, and you know, get these kind of like very huge data because there's so much interesting stuff that happens with it. But on the other hand, there's a lot, it's very expensive, you know, like if you, even if you use like the Google Cloud or use AWS and you run these kind of models, you're paying literally per token, you know, mm -hmm. you, you for every token that you, that you inference from these kind of models is, you're paying by by token or per thousand tokens or per compute second or whatever it is, but like it's it's expensive. So having this like you know like smaller and smaller and being running on like less expensive equipment is, and especially if it's for a specific use case, which I think a lot of businesses probably have. Like for example, if you have uh, a lot of documentation, you need FAQs or something like that. You know, like these kind of things are perfect for developing these kind of uh, these kind of documents. Actually. It's so incredible that we're talking about this. Like literally, just today, um, Intel has officially, you know, they they publicly announced that they're, you know, they had they have been wounded. Uh, uh, AMD and Nvidia is one hundred percent moving in on the CPU space um, in order to build oh, yes. desktop <laughs> class locked CPUs that are going to be focused in exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. They're the 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 not just. The, these companies, but actually it goes all the way up to national security. They're starting to see computers and general CPUs as a threat because they're going to see people with these super powerful AI systems running off yep. pretty much sandboxes with un unrestricted perimeters to the point that they're saying, hey, we're going to now the, the, the typical desktop CPU is going to be locked to enterprise and mm. companies that are going to be able to use those 
uh, elite sandboxes. We're about to see the death of, you know, what we know today as an Intel i7 or general computers because of that reason. Interesting. It's, Mm-hmm. Buy those chips quick. <laughs> well, they're still Ooh, around. Uh, that's, well, that's, that's like it's, I remember, it's... like when uh, you know we went through phones, you know, cell phones, mobile phones, and um, you know the batteries could be taken out. You know, the thing could be literally dead <laughs> to the world, and eventually, you know, it's it's all fused. You can't get phones not not it's, easily anyway. Oh, not man. not consumer devices because of course it wants to be on all the time to be tracking you and listening and all these things. That's um, actually security. That, that that was actually I was part of literally that specific scene, which was using uh, b- most electronics. I don't know uh, Sony specifically used their batteries as a way to lock the security firmwares of most other devices. The the PSP, the Vita. Um, there was something called the Pandora battery that I was heavily involved in, which allowed you to pretty much unlock the PSP security using the actual battery because they carried firmwares in them. So that's huh. the reason why, yeah, this is just sick cat and mouse races. That <laughs> yep, yep, exactly, cat and mouse the whole way. Uh, <laughs> yep. Where we we're, we're gonna end up with one of those sci-fi <laughs> films before long. Dude, I mean, it really is coming on happening. very fast, very like, fast. Like literally, they they were talking about like, imagine somebody with like an AI system that can do you know end the world in the back of a cell phone and, and it's like whoa, and they're using that as the as the fear mongering to you know yoink you know, general computers from the market. Yeah, I don't know. It's really interesting. And also just seeing the way the, the world has been responding to a, f- a few things uh, lately. I mean, Canada, it, it's kind of fun keeping an eye on that. I say fun with uh, air, air quotes around it, but it's like, are we going to like sail off like China from a data perspective at some point? You know, they're trying to kind of control the news networks and other. So it's kind of like watching all of that stuff is interesting. But then when, when you were talking, Jose, about Brazil and other countries and constantly anytime you get a new device out and you post a video related to new hardware someone somewhere in the world that says i can't get it here is it worth my while importing it will it even function in my country and like i'm not i'm not the person to answer those questions but it gets you it reminds you of the fact that there really is only a small number of countries who get access to kind of the latest greatest hardware and countries like let's say portugal oftentimes lose out on this. And it's like, well, hey, we're not that far away from the other bigger European countries. What about us? Um, and then, of course, you've got people, you know, down in the reaches of uh, South uh, South America, for example, who just, you know, get get totally kind of axed from some of that stuff. So, um, yeah, feel for feel for our friends uh, further afield who, who don't have access to the new tech uh, in any easy way. And, yes, it's worth smuggling <laughs> across the border. <laughs> we'll cut that out. We'll cut that out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a whole different topic. <laughs> oh. So, uh, with that, if you're feeling chatty and you've just joined the podcast, just a reminder, we are actually pre-recording this episode. Uh, today, for us, in the temporal vortex, is the 25th of October. So, we're not... It, Halloween hasn't even passed us just yet. And, um, you know, if I live in a world where it's not okay to also live in the future... Um, I don't want to be part of that world. That's why I've got my Skyrim, you know, Christmas jumper out because after Halloween's done, we're basically at Christmas. You know, might as well get out Mariah Carey out of her out of her coffin. You know, <laughs> maybe <laughs> AI say, is taking over. back to life, but I'm not sure that's how it works. Maybe well, AI is like take taken Adam. over by the time that we aired his episodes. <laughs> the episode will air on, but we won't be here anymore. Yeah, we'll be alive digitally. <laughs> this is we'll our last cyborgs. episode. <laughs> AI eating AI popcorn, just watching it, like kicking back. Yeah. Yeah. Silly humans. Uh, Little did Jesus. they know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. But anyway, I'll, I'll encourage you if you've got uh, things for us or whatever, just pop them in the comments uh, on the video if you're watching us back afterwards. If we happen to premiere this and you're watching it live, then we'll we'll, we'll take a look at your chat as well. Uh, well, finally, on to myself. Uh, I'm Zim, and well, I'm you know just preparing for a podcast with just four days uh, <laughs> worth of content is pretty tough. So it's going to be a pretty lean podcast for you. But I'm pretty relaxed, you know, because this is a fun crew. Um, my my personal highlight is that I got to try out something that Adam was going on about last podcast all that way back, which was the seventh <laughs> guest. So long ago. And I got to try it on my whore of a console. Oh, geez, what's happening here? Uh, the PS5 with the PSVR2, of course. Uh, so it was really good to be back in that headset. And I just got to say, 
still super comfortable, still feels super breezy in terms of the setup time. Um, I still find, even on Quest 3, their software stack, just it's a pain in the ass to- at times. And it's like, you know, it forgets a boundary or something glitches or whatever it is. I don't know why, but Sony's system doesn't feel that way to me. Like, it doesn't feel like a pain in the ass all the time with updates or whatever. It's just a breeze. So it was nice going back. But man, um, after playing, I played Propagation Paradise Hotel first, which is a, a, an ungodly dark game. Yay! It's like, tests the dark levels, right? And enjoyed that a lot. And then I moved on to Seventh Guest. And it was funny because my audience was like, ah, you, you, missed, you messed up the gamma. It, it can't be this bright. And I'm like, no, that's, that's the game. The game has this kind of funny aura where it's not gloomy murky. It's actually quite bright. It's like gr- almost like green bright ectoplasm-y yeah. sort of. Like a green mist that's like that. or something. <laughs> that's, what, yeah, that's one way to put it. It felt like kind of like a, a Ghostbusters film or maybe another ghost film where you walk in and it's midday, but like the shades are drawn and it's just like, the, there's dust scattered around. It felt like that kind of gray esque, right? Like kind of that level of light. Um, but I have to say, I'm a guy who loves like room escapes and those kinds of puzzles, like puzzles that you don't expect. Um, and this one really felt like the invisible hours had a baby wow. with a room escape game and so it's got really cool characters that have this volumetric capture that is really well done. It's not perfect, but it's a it's a it's a step up from LA Noir, uh, the PS VR or PC VR title from Rockstar. For those who were like, what? Rockstar made a VR game? Yeah, go check it out. It's a, it's a tidbit. It's a snippet of a couple of hours from LA Noir, their game, which had that wonderful facial capture a few years back. And this felt like that in the faces and animations of the characters. Really impressive. So um, Adam said it was cool. I checked it out. It's cool. <laughs> you know, it's cool as well. And and the puzzle design is just fantastic. Really so good. far, absolutely zero repetition. Nothing I could have expected. And the story is pretty gripping. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm sold on it already. And I definitely want to beat that game. So I'll be revisiting it and running it the way through. I don't know, Adam, did you get a chance to beat that game yet? Or uh, not yet? With everything going on, I haven't even had a chance to try the full, the released one out now. I'm, I'm so sad. Okay. And I'm like, I don't know if you, I'll even have time in the next two weeks, but I'm going to try really wow. hard because I, I really liked it. Like you said, the puzzles were really fun and really creative. And I'm stupid. So like good. me and puzzles, not good, but I, I enjoyed this one a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, Neanderthal, Adam. Glad to have you on the team. Just hit The stuff. puzzle team. We... Definitely, I on my bucket list, it's get F reality into an escape room in real life one oh, day and no. do an escape room together. It'd be fun, I think. Um, maybe a horror one just for Jose. But anyway, <laughs> um, so that was me, and I was just super happy with that. The other thing that I just wanted to update people on is last podcast, which to me is four days, to you guys is two weeks ago. Um, I said I was going to take back the Ray Bands, I was taking them back that, that, that day. Oh no! Uh, I'm having difficulty <laughs> bringing them back <laughs> because they're just a really cool device um, at capturing moments, it's little moments, right? They're limited to a, a minute recording. But I'm like, I'm now at the point where I'm like trying to convince the wife. It's like maybe I could just keep them. I was wondering because <laughs> you know? they kept saying you post about them still, and I'm like, wait, it's after like, Saturday when he said minute. he was going to the store to return them, and he apparently still has them and is commenting on people's comments who has them with pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so you're making happening. it a business wow. expense. You're, you're out here track. promoting it, man. <laughs> It doesn't help. I did a I did a VR job, got some money, and I'm like, I could pay for that. You know, like, <laughs> one of those situations where you're like, oh, covers um, it. But it's yeah, just the videos are effortless. That's the thing for me is like when you want to create a video or a picture, and and you can modify things. Like so, for example, I modified the software. It allows you to do this, uh, so that instead of holding down the button, which I always think of, is a little bit creepy when you're like looking at something and you're like hold the button just for a second, it becomes very obvious what you're doing. You can change it so that it's just a tap, right? So just like you would if you were going to take a photo, you invert those two. So now I've got it where, like if I'm looking at a house that I really like the look of, and I don't want someone seeing my, me take my phone out and take a picture of their house, I can literally just say, hey, Meta, take a photo. And it'll just snap it and I'll keep walking about my business and no one will know. Um, the other day, my wife was saying something really endearing to me. And I, I, t- I tapped the button just as she walked into the room. 
recorded literally face to face. She didn't notice that the little light was blinking on and off. And that's how discreet it actually is. And that's how I feel in person with it as well. You don't really notice it. It doesn't catch your eye. Uh, <laughs> Just a good thing, maybe not for the urinal, but you know, oh. it's a good thing for this could be. Uh, it's it's a good thing for when you just want to you know capture a nice little life moment without getting in the face of it. Because you know, everyone puts a, a face on when you're when you're like, hey, cheese, and all this kind of stuff. So it's been really really good at like just mining moments out of real life, and then when you watch it back, you're like, wow, that's a lovely capture. And so, mm. damn you, Meta, <laughs> you cr cracked your way into my life. I mean, game just think of it this way. Again. Just think of it this way, Zim, if you want to validate this purchase, like, you know, if you really want to make your kids appreciate real food, you know, have them a week or two weeks on bread and water. <laughs> you know? That was a totally different direction where I was going to go. I was going to say this is going to be great for a couple's arguments because you can go back and be like, no, you did say this. See, I recorded it. <laughs> <laughs> this Holy is cow, literally what? an episode of Black Mirror. Like, it literally <laughs> is. It literally is. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's a, that would be that that's not a good idea. To <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna get everybody in trouble. Um, I've actually had that chat with my wife where I'm like, "Don't send me the stuff over WhatsApp because then Meta knows we're fighting or whatever." You know? it's like, uh, but of course, the quest is sitting there in the corner watching me, and the phone's recording me. And in fact, Big Brother's here. You know, this is we're just living in 1984 now. And for those who don't know, get that reference. Unfortunate. That's just like the unfortunate reality. If they if they don't get that sweet data, it ain't gonna get more fun. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I still might. Uh, I still might return them. You know, uh -huh. Sit on the idea and come back uh -huh. to it in four months. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. So right now you, you can have? see it in my face. Yeah, yeah. Like, Keep them, bro. What the hell? Uh, I've still got a while. I've still got a while. Still got um. Like I can take them back. You know, next weekend, like when the podcast <laughs> would run. <so. laughs> We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what the next like, week does. Oh, I, I was too late by bringing it back <laughs> just <laughs> by a day. Uh, they're, they're, I begged the manager. Begged him I don't so know if hard. You didn't mention, Look, I've got it recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you mentioned this, Zim, but I, I did see. I, I, I feel so bad. I, I Actually, I, I think it was Gamertag. I saw he posted a video about it where he spoke about the ability to replay videos, but also the audio that gets replayed. If you do have the the glasses on, it will play the spatial audio, I said which that. means I that, said that you too, do well. get a more surreal like memory because you actually can hear the exact audio how it was recorded, which can actually right. make it much more meaningful. So I, I well, think that's cool a. Thing... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. No, oh, go ahead. I was just saying. Um, so maybe GT said that, but I, I had responded to a video that uh, the other Jasmine uh, had had recorded at this like beachside restaurant, I guess she was coming out of it and there was some music playing or whatever. And I had my Ray-Bans on just coincidentally when I played this thing back on Twitter and the spatial audio carried through. So as she's turning her head and stuff, I'm hearing the music Weird. behind her and I'm like, I felt in her shoes to some extent, even though I'm looking at a flat video. And the same sentiment that she shared, which is it's just so easy to kind of walk about with this thing on. Um, so I might end up returning these and just switching to like transition lenses or something because one of the things I'm doing a lot is I'm working during my workday using them, but they're sunglasses. So it's like I'm fighting the yeah. sunglass part a little bit and I'm like, maybe I could justify spending even more money now. <laughs> ben, I, I'm, not so thinking, I, I'm not here thinking about oh. a part of your experiments. Have you tried rewatching a... Uh-oh. I'm on the edge of my seat. Yes, watching A. <laughs> He's going to come back to us yeah. at some point. I, we'll get to hear the rest of this story. I've been really tempted, but, though. Uh, but if I get them, I would want the transitions, too, so I could actually use them indoors. But I'm like, oh, it's Christmas. <laughs> I yeah, know. I was going to say, because then that's like, I mean, they're already... Let's see, they're already about 309 for the base model in US, so it's like 420 Canadian dollars. It adds an, at least another like 200, so it's like a 600 Canadian dollar pair of sunglasses, which if you then drop or sit on or something, like, you know what I mean? Like, I could justify the 300 US dollars to myself, but I'm not sure I can go higher right now. Are they so, fragile we'll feeling? Do they feel... No. Oh, okay. Well. No, 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 they're not, they're not flimsy. No, it didn't. Come, come, come back to us. So, Zay, go and ask that question. What are we going to ask? VR, like a VR video. 
where oh. you have the 360 audio recorded and replay that with the Ray Bands and, and see if you could actually pick up on like maybe like a Beat Saber recording. Because I actually now you got me mm. thinking about re like content creation that's done in VR being rewatched with spatial audio headphones. If if mm. there is something there that the Ray Bands could potentially unlock. I don't know. See, I don't know enough about how the audio track, like it's clearly just a stereo recording, I think, but there's something about how that gets handled with the up and down firing speakers in the arms that makes it feel like certain sounds are separated from other sounds in the same way that a nice pair of open back headphones works with your favorite album. You put it on and you're like, wow, I never knew a drum kit was over here and the guitar was you know, you can think of it as almost like degrees of separation. So you're mm -hmm. like, oh, at 20 degrees in a different direction. Um, so I don't know. I'll have to have to try it out. The other thing that I'm still planning to try out is a try to do a pseudo through the lens shot and see if how that comes out as well. So there's more testing to be done uh, in the limited time I may or may not have with those. So who knows? <laughs> maybe by the time the podcast airs, I'll, I'll have returned them or maybe not. Um, I really do think for people who are thinking about them, like I said last episode, they're just a really cool device. And it is definitely the first smart tech that I've been enamored with. The Apple Watch, as I said before, it felt like a leech that sat on my arm and like just wanted to pull my eyeballs to notifications <laughs> all the time. And I, it's similar to TikTok. I felt uncomfortable with TikTok, uninstalled that shit after a short amount of time. <laughs> Same thing with the Apple Watch. <laughs> like, out. It's got to go out of my life. Just didn't feel like a healthy relationship. So, uh, so far, not a toxic relationship. When AI comes in and it can tell me things about the scene or whatever uh, in, a, in a heavier way than it is currently um, enabled by Meta, I don't know what that will do. So I'm curious to see which way uh, this, this takes the train. But yeah, some people have been saying it's an easier to fall in love with device than a Quest 3. And I... Ooh. I would I would agree with that. I would agree with that. It's it's a very easy purchase. It, it it's very easy to kind of couple into your lives. So that was my long winded highlight. Thank you for bearing it. And um, let's move on to the newsreel. No sponsors this week. Um, so first up, I wanted to highlight for all of our sake and as a little bit of a dovetail from the last episode, given that was only four days <laughs> away. Ignore the gravity well and the time difference. Um, was that we spent 90 minutes together in Horizon. All four of us tag teamed up in, uh, and Jose took on the horror game Gauntlet in Horizon. So I wanted to ask you all how, how you felt that went and what you thought about Horizon. You know, Frustrating. I was going to say, it, it uh, may be potentially relationship I, ending for some people. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I, was about, I was about to be my lost time with the Ephraim. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no, it was hilarious. We have it recorded, Rowdy. We can, we, we, can, yeah. we saw all of, we, all, we saw all of that. You muttering under your breath and the cursing. Oh. Um, I, I thought it was I funny like to though. Call like, it virtual when, incompetence. <laughs> when, when, when did, when did you transition? Because we all like transitioned into roles that I didn't expect us to necessarily play into. Because uh, we haven't spent that much time in multiplayer. We've done a few. We did Demio. We did a few other titles. Uh, but this is maybe the first one that really went smoothly um and rowdy and immediately we, we played a, a ghost game called haunted high uh which was which was one of the two things that we played but it was really good kind of a yeah, again we're all thinking kind of ghostbusters and that kind of theme ghost hunting halloween so we played this and it was it was weird first off i'm gonna set the scene really quickly before i continue with my question for rowdy which is the basic game mechanic is you basically pop zits it's like popping pimples all around a map but they're ghost pimples and the ghosts don't want you to be doing that for some reason. I don't know if it's their babies or something and they chase you down. So, and you're in a, you're in a high school setting. Uh, so it's corridors kind of like a, a you know, college campus or high school, something like that. And uh, you got places you can duck into to hide from the ghosts. And in the central room, very much like phasmophobia, uh, your team like sitting out in the van can, can uh, help you. Right. But Rowdy immediately took this job upon himself after maybe just a, a round or two, he sat in this room and then he just started barking orders at all of it's us. And it was great. It was fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. It's, he would get so hilarious. frustrated too because he's trying to track all three of us down. Turn he's like, that. okay, go now. And then like all of us go out even though we're in totally different areas. <laughs> and he's like, no, 
no, no, no, Sam, you go back in. No, Adam out or Jose out. And it's just like, it was chaos. But it's so, I felt so bad the, the for best was the, the best part was like when Jose was in the room, like in the control room. And I was like, Jose, whatever you do, don't leave now. Don't and the leave. next time I look at Jose, I see him like screaming and running outside. <laughs> Bringing the monsters back into the mission yeah, control room. I didn't know they could come back <laughs> in. You're I just staring at him dying. To be, to be fair, I didn't know that the ghosts will go inside the control room. <laughs> I did not expect that part. Uh, and then you got liquefied. I watched it. Yeah. It just got liquefied in this big puddle. Honestly, <laughs> it, it, it made me think about like the, the, the concept of dying in front of somebody, like of being attacked. Because like, like, I just literally witnessed myself being murdered in front of you guys. And you're just, you're just staring at me with no ability what to do. It's like, man, this is, this is, I guess this is what it would feel like. But, uh, yeah. yeah, man. <laughs> those guys were those guys were mean but uh, man the amount of times that jose died like it, oh, <laughs> it was amazing it felt like uh... like it's like we're a minute in jose's already expended his three lives <laughs> it was like what jose, how are you dead already the issue with those gays would be and i i am the typical like person to get murdered like <laughs> first in like horror movies there's a oh, there's God. probably why i don't associate so well with that because i am like <laughs> i am what people call the wild card for better or for worse oh we know <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, hey, listen, let, let the cards stack wherever they fall. <laughs> the, the best oh. part is when Zim like tried to like have you tag along with him. <laughs> yeah, no, and it was like you were just like the bait. <laughs> I, listen, I knew I knew the role. I knew the role I was signing up for was like, listen, this is probably a better. This so is probably a better use. Stick case. close to me, and then it was like a monster there, and Zim so just like ran off. The opposite direction. He's like, you know, like I don't, I don't need to be fast. I just need to be faster than the other guy. Like, oh man, uh, Rowdy knows me. I'm so fucking evil. Like that was so intentional. <laughs> so intentional. That was a fun one though. I really liked that one because it had objectives yeah. and stuff. So I, I'm curious to oh. see. We have to try some other of the game type worlds and Horizon I worlds. Beat that one, like. Like, uh, Rowdy's battery died, and then, Jose, you had a call to go to or something. Yeah, I think I, I, think I just had to leave after... So we resigned I, to, I'm like, down. all right, we'll, like, finish off this thing. Adam and I got to, I think, level 7, and then died there. But there are 10 levels, so you can actually beat, you know, 10 levels. And there's a bunch of achievements that go with it hand-in-hand hand as well. And there were so I didn't look at the collectibles. I think you did, Adam. What did we get for... You know, beating as far as we some did. Some kind of sticker. Well, another thing you can throw up in the air when you do this. I don't remember. Oh, I don't know what those are called. The, the hands. I love it. Stickers. I love it. <laughs> Active emojis. Yeah, whatever they are. Where you More throw active. your arms yeah. in the air and confetti pops out. No, no, no. It was out. the. It's a, th it's a thumbs up thing. Is a thumbs up sticker. Oh, thumbs up. I, okay. I don't know the proper what, what was it? A ghost? I think it was like a, a pumpkin? like a uh, skull. Head. It was some kind of head, either a zombie head or ghost head or something. I don't remember. Okay. Oh, man. That was that was good though. That was really really good fun. I had, and that's the kind of thing I came away from it. Just just thinking like, what does this mean for like Rec Room and VR Chat if another contender has actually <laughs> entered? Because I got to tell you this, every time I pick up my headset, and again this is gonna make me sound like a goddamn meta show. <laughs> every time I pick up the feckin' headset, Quest headset, right? Playing standalone Quest games, no joke. Four, like out of five or six people who I have online, four to five of them are in Horizon. Like, that's wow. weird. That's like, it's working, I guess, yeah. for them. And this sucks for two reasons. Number one, we thought they would die and they kind of deserved to die and they didn't. <laughs> and number two, if you're, not in an, if you're not in a place where you can actually play this, then you're just going to resign all of us to, you know, we have meta devices and we suck. But I, I get it. But like, get a VPN. I think this is a, a good time <laughs> to do it. Find a way to try Horizon in its current state. Um, I, I was really impressed with the amount of fun I got out of Haunted High specifically. Trying the other games that we had played previously were good. Uh, decent to good. I wouldn't say great, but, you know, good games. Solid games that were fun and I'd, I'd happily play for half hour, an hour. This is something, however, that, albeit somewhat repetitive, like, I'd love to go back there with you guys yeah. and try to take on up to level oh, 10. It's Christmas special. Game. Fun. They're going to have Christmas <laughs> worlds, I'm sure. We're going to have the we every other Christmas special. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, uh, I think it's a lot to, to, to know this, that they waited. You, you mentioned Rec Room and, and, and Roblox. It, it's, but those, those platforms came out before VR went mainstream, and they had to yeah. kind of tap in virtual reality later on, and they still haven't been able to kind of get to a place where they're 
we would call it like parody, um, where Horizons is built with parody from the ground up. It's from the get go, which is something that I I don't think we have seen in any platform at all. Uh, I, I still go back to I, I think I mentioned it last, last podcast, but that's something that keeps going back to to the back of my mind is the the I, I was on Horizon originally on PC VR disconnected from the PC VR client, disconnected on the computer, and less than a minute connected on the Quest app version. So that oh, yeah, means that was complete, super cool. Yeah, to disconnect and connect right into the call. Like I didn't have to press anything immediately on the group chat, showed me the link to join you guys back into the world. That was, it, it completely blew my that, mind. That's awesome. That did, I'll bet you that didn't feel like meta. You're like, no way this is. No, yeah, no, no that was magical yeah. to me. That was, honestly, that was, that that to me opened up, you know, all of these, you know, the the when Meta Horizon was being brought up, you there, there was so the idea of like imagine being able to pop into a concert immediately and all these use cases right. they never yeah. seemed possible, but seeing right. that immediately jump into a call with you guys, like, oh man, it's you'll be able to eventually maybe create like preset friends that if they're on Horizon Worlds as soon as you pop into the headset, it will auto log into it, right? So yeah. those kind of instances will now be possible. It's super cool to to actually see it as a real thing. It works. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It it's it's both it's working and uh, it even runs on ancient old rusty hardware like what Rowdy played with, which I think is a Quest zero point five or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> the original DK. <laughs> 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 no, but like, I'm actually curious on performance. Um, so for us, it was smooth. I'm, but I'm, it's got to be targeting Quest 2. Oh, everything that's built in there has got to have been built yeah. for Quest 2. Yeah. Did you notice any performance issues while we were playing, Rowdy? No, no, of course not. Yeah. I mean, it's cartoony, right? It doesn't look terribly yeah, uh, great or anything. It's, it's very much, it, yeah, it's, it, it, it almost looks like that old game 13, right? Like almost cell shaded, um, kind of cartoon flat textures, no real. You know, there's no fog or shadows or it's so it's it's very basic, but it's still pretty cool. Um, again, I hate to have to say that, right? But I do I, I'm trying to project this out now. It's like where does rec room go? Where does VR chat go? I never thought Horizon would be a contender, and now I'm starting to second guess that and kind of be like, okay, three years from now, what does that landscape look like and how much of the ecosystem do they each own? I mean, Rec Room's huge because they've got the maker pen and people able to actually capitalize on it. There are people who are making their full-time day job as a Rec Room creator. Uh, I don't know how VR chat works in that respect. Um, Adam, more it's rowdy, more like do you guys Patreon. know? It's not like directly through VR chat. It would be like, oh, you get private, you, you get like specific rooms in this VR chat world if you're a patron of the individual. So it's usually like third party ways that they have to do it, which is like, it could be better, you know, but. And then VR chat themselves keep the lights on through VR chat plus or whatever that's called, mm -hmm. um, which, which gives you additional emotes, a wardrobe of, I don't know, 30 or 50 characters you can swap between. It just gives you those kind of premium features that you don't. It's not a necessity for for day to day. And so. not scalable. Yeah, it's cool. And at it's the cool. end of the day, I, I think that's that's the important note. It's like we have seen world or platforms and games that try to mm -hmm. keep the lights on with just cosmetics. That that runs out. Um, I think that what Horizons has best is corporate brand, you know, polish. They'll be able to perhaps be able to get the giant companies that kind of dabbled with VR chat years ago, but they got scared about all of the stuff that VR mm. chat can be done and, and kind of avoid it. And then they started, you know, building their own metaverse world and all these, we saw the, the boom in virtual real estate, but the realities that, that we're creating that is because there was brand awareness or, or fear from using platforms like Rec Room or, yeah, or, of course. or VR chat. And, and, and for good reason. So mm -hmm. it's really funny because I thought that the death knell for Horizon might be the fact that they had such a big brother and they don't they don't they don't accentuate it, right? But the whole point is they've got a tight a cleanup crew that's basically monitoring and can if you report it, it'll play back audio. They can kill your account, all that kind of stuff. So it's every user's got a gun to their head when they when they sign up and go in for the first time. Um, Rec Room and VR Chat don't have that. They have some security and reporting features, but it's more of a 
catch me if you can. It's uh, it's an after the fact. And that, like Gorilla Tag, it's almost impossible to keep up with the user yeah. base given their financial model. Whereas I feel like the same content monitoring team that is tied to Horizon could be tied to other platforms that Meta builds in the future. And that team could expand. God, I again, I, I really don't like necessarily <laughs> rooting for this champion because... I, th I don't think it necessarily takes us into a good place. I think it might end us in a dystopia. Um, and I still want that th those worlds, Rec Room and VRChat's worlds, to exist. Like, VRChat is an artisan's paradise. The worlds in there are incredibly detailed. It's beautiful. You know, you go in there and there's places you can find that are just pure tranquility. And you just chill out for the night, you know? Um, Again, I want to just uh, shout out Raindance has their uh, VR festival coming up. If you get a chance to get a ticket or see those shows, see the things that they've cherry picked, uh, pay attention to that. They do a fantastic job every year, and I think it's their ninth year. Um, so with that, anything else on the Horizon experience, guys, before we move on to the next little news bulletin? Christmas special. We're going to have to come back. <laughs> They're going to have Christmas worlds. Maybe we'll, I guess yeah. since they're limited in certain countries, they probably would be okay with Christmas, right, as a holiday to celebrate i don't know you know some places are kind of so. weird about that i, I yeah but say... I... oh, sorry. in the in the eight countries that they're live in i think <laughs> christmas is celebrated in about seven of eight of them <laughs> the holidays it's it'll be snow stuff not christmas just holidays Winter but it'll be christmas that's, themed that's what they're called or something like that, yeah. So, yeah whatever <laughs> <laughs> i would I, I would say i that you know if they're listening to if Matt is listening Add Horizons as the home launcher, you cowards! Like it, it's it's <laughs> it's clearly it's there. You mean go in there first. Yes, like the, the home I hate launcher. You. Yes, I, I the hate home you. launcher. Yeah, don't, that, don't the do home, that. the Oculus Home should Back be then. Horizon Worlds. You no should. way, dude. We we did that already. We did that for five years. We did it with the Vive. We did it with the original Oculus Home. It's like. I don't think we're ready for that yet. I, I, I agree oh, that inevitably oh, having there, a place <laughs> that's customized, that's yours, that you can bring other people to, that you can launch from. Um, it's a little bit about what Adam was exploring with their home feature last yes. podcast. Like, I, and you're a futurist. Like, you're thinking, you're not thinking, like, necessarily just compartmentalized into today. You're thinking oh, I even can, months oh, ahead. No, I'm saying now. They can do it now. The the, the home launcher, <laughs> the now. home launcher experience is there. You can launch to Super Rumble from the virtual oh. living room. There is a there, why I mean, not? It, it's maybe, all there. Maybe if you launched into your own private room in yes, Horizon of course. Worlds, no, no. and then I don't want it to be a public it. instance. Yeah, your own public <laughs> Yeah, yeah, your own bubble for sure. But the rec room does that. Like, like, okay. Let's let's parry here for a second, Jose. So the thing that I loved the absolute most putting on the Quest 3 for the first time was I put that on and I could see my room. In other words, mixed reality was the default. And I think that should be the case. I know when I was thinking about the Quest 3, before when I had the Quest 2 in hand and I'd never tried one yet, I was like, people were talking about, you, no one wants to see your messy surroundings. You just want to disappear to somewhere else. I 180'd completely having tried that myself. And now when you talk about <clears throat> kind of taking away my actual home and replacing it with something else, yeah. my personal preference would be don't do that. Now, if you're, if you're saying I can have virtual, you know, mirrors on the walls and portals to the games that I like or whatever, and it's customized for me and somehow dynamically doesn't require me to set up spatial guardian every feckin' time I go in the headset, and it just intelligently is able to lay that stuff out in 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 the configuration that I, I want. Okay, I'm on board. But if you're talking, send me the virtual plane like they have in Rec Room today, where you go to your little bedroom and you know you've got the dartboard and I've got a couple of beers lying on the couch because I thought it was funny <laughs> for a, a kids game to I call it a kids game uh, for a couple of beers to be hanging around a kids game. Uh, I don't want that. You know, I don't want I don't want to be just in another virtual environment anymore. I think I, I, I like real life. Why not? You know, that's what it's Why not me. both? And I have, like, I know that they probably couldn't do it because everyone is going to, you know, do take your headset into different rooms. But since it already maps your space and stuff, why can't it just give you a virtual version of your space? Because you mapped out all of your walls and crap furniture Ooh, and everything. And then you cool double idea. tap. So you have certain augments that will stay in virtual reality or in augmented reality. Mm. So just, you know, it's, there, it's just there. And you, just can, you can view virtual or not. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. I, I like nice. the idea of the infrastructure, the, the the network connectivity, the 
the the handoff i love the idea of entering you know the metaverse and immediately you know you it's like going into a, a virtual world that hey the, all these people are online and you can immediately you know go into their virtue if they're if they're home environment is set to public you can just pop in there you know what i mean in, in, in a matter of like two clicks I, I think that's and see the only other argument that i would have against that is something that i've experienced with the quest pro recently which is like work zen is it can be set on the charger controllers docked headset docked and i'll pick it up and i'll throw it at my head in the middle of a work day or whatever and straight away virtual desktop kicks in i don't have to launch anything i don't have to do anything Good. I'm just bam there looking at my super huge monitor with my document there ready for me to work and, and collaborate or, 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 you know, create. Um, and, and it's frictionless. So the last thing I want to do is bring friction into that. But I thought I'd share that because I didn't think that was possible, particularly in, in Meta's ecosystem today. But that's, that's been like my, that's been, that's been fun with, uh, with the pro. So I thought I would just mention that. I don't know if you've had that same experience, Jose, because initially when you were testing Pro out, you were talking to us about it, and then you were like modding it and all this other stuff, and it felt like you were finding your balance with the with the device. Yeah. Is it is it something you still work in? Do no. You, so do you ever reach so for the it? Quest Pro is still my number one productivity headset when I'm home. It is hmm. the, the eye tracking is by far really, especially when you when you set up messing around with VDXR. They actually have uh, eye-based uh, foreated rendering for the monitors, so that there's a reason why I brought that up earlier. Like they're they're huh. adding, yeah. So there's they're bringing in mixed reality. They're bringing pass-through uh, virtual per portals using Quest Three hardware. This is uh, I, I mentioned it um, a, a while back about my personal bets on Meta's or, or Valve's approach to headsets in the future, where they're going to probably abandon making headsets and just make really deep integrations. That's what they're doing with the Quest 3. The, the, the Quest 3's pass-through cameras, their, the sensors, they're now deeply rooted into Steam's OpenXR environments. All of the hardware features, you'll be able to bring that to VR without having to, for Valve, to make their own VR headset. So that's uh, it's interesting. The uh, so I didn't know the eye tracking was really used very much in the pro. Um, maybe maybe another time because I'd like to get on with the yeah. news. But I'm really curious to pick your brain on where you've seen the eye tracking be used because thus far, oh, I don't think I've used my eye tracking on the pro ever. I, I don't think not even once. Eye <laughs> like tracking is going to be yeah. it just so, and we could probably talk this definitely at length in another in another episode. But sure. In in a quick answer, PC VR. Um, eye tracking. I think that that's really where we're going to start seeing now the the, the beginnings of the, the dominance or, or the reemergence of the dominance of PC VR over all-in-one headsets. Right, right now we 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 are at a position where I can say and and own up to that that we do have PC VR parity now from all-in-one headsets. So there is, there has to be now differentiators, and I think that graphic fidelity is not enough. Now it's going to be all about interoperability and the capabilities that get opened up because of that. And eye tracking is going to be probably the the best tool uh, to enable that. That's why we won't need a depth sensor on the Quest Pro because the realities are whatever's going to be built on the Quest Pro is going to be, you know, gearing up for the successor of the Quest Pro. It's, right, maybe a it's interesting Pro because too. the Quest, I mean, the problem now is we have the Quest Pro with these features, and then we have the Quest 3, which is kind of like, in my opinion, the better headset. Yeah. And now immediately I want a headset that kind of fuses the two together. Like, yeah. you know, ne next year if I don't hear from Meta that they're they're building that, then we're not getting it for, you know, at least three years. Oh, so man. it's like, I, I, I want next year at Meta Connect to hear about, a headset that's going to come that's basically a quest three the next step you know that they're going to be building and maybe a headset that leans a little bit closer into uh mixed reality even even with but the you know the the, the ray-ban glasses and that whole venture i'm really interested in what they can do uh in a small form factor and given rowdy's intro like can we do something even fancier in a tiny form factor uh, for example, give me anything displayed on the glasses. Because like today, I mentioned this before, there's a little LED indicator which tells you if the device is connected or whatever else. It's very subtle. And you can control how bright it is, which is nice as well. Um, 
but like to do that but get something on the display anything ar wise would be really really rad any kind of hud like a little i know i'm not usually a hud guy but like something whatever it is even if i just had a notification to say that i need to check my phone or oh god i'm back to the wristwatch thing here <laughs> now but something the temperature for example a little widget that would just show the temperature floating in maybe in in on top of the glasses so it looked like it was etched in it's not like super apparent but when i need the information i can look at it or for example if you're wearing the glasses and you're driving and you can just see your current speed you know, how fast you're going, for example, in like a pop-up HUD. Oh, That'd be really neat. I'm really sure. glad that you mentioned that. Um, just today, Qualcomm did announce their, uh, and I have the name here, the, the Snapdragon X Elite. Like a, 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 a second uh, yeah, tech so drop I, today? I've been following, yeah. yeah so uh, there has been, it, it's very interesting that we're, what we're talking, that we're doing this podcast this week, is this is actually uh, uh, the Intel... CPU uh, week for for a lot of uh, enterprise focused uh, efforts. So there's a lot of events happening during this season. This so it's like Shark Week for Silicon. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's a that's a really good. That's an amazing analogy. Um, so yeah, November, October through December are usually where we start hearing about the efforts for quarter two of 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 these technologies. But uh, Snapdragon actually introduced something called their X series CPUs, which are 100 percent going to take on the similar CPU architecture as the Vision Pro headset, which are right. oh, you mean all split? encompassing CPUs, and they're scaling from very low form factor operations. They're, they're breaking them down to cores, right? As you mentioned, a maybe like a core that can just handle basic functionalities like the weather in augmented reality and scale oh, all the way so up cool. to a high-end X-core CPU that has, you know, all the bells and whistles that we want in a spatial headset, right? Eye tracking, biometric, you know, spatial occlusion, all of that is gonna be now handled by specific cores, which is how the market is deciding they're gonna communicate with consumers. Ah, very good. Well, with that, let's move on to something else that's quite exciting. I mean, there's some awesome stuff coming to Mixed Reality. And as, you know, Quest 3 gets out there into people's hands, uh, it feels like there's even more developers who are putting stuff out with patches and updates and more AR stuff for us to play with. From faux Minecraft, uh, the new horror game that's just come out, The Cabin, uh, and lighthearted games like Coaster Mania where you murder unsuspecting guests of your theme park by drowning them in your cat's water dish. So That's seriously, fun. some pretty cool stuff happening. Um, I, one of the things that's an update to Coaster Mania, which will be old news to most people, as this will have been a week and a half ago that it came out, um, is that the Coaster Mania now can, it had MR before, and you were able to play with your coaster in your room, but now it can kind of dynamically... Uh, connected to your room, set you puzzles. Uh, and it felt to me very much like playing laser dance. In other words, you're going from one side of the room to the other side of the room, you know, with coasters and what have you. So I'm really looking forward to kind of toying with that and playing uh, with some some of that. But um, absolutely, chat, you guys have a responsibility here as well. Let us know what you've been enjoying in mixed reality and augmented reality. It's hard to know what to call it anymore. <laughs> you won't find me using XR. I hate that term. Uh, but mixed reality, I'll call it for the time being. Uh, just having fun in your real environment and being able to kind of uh, keep an eye on your family, your doormates at the same time is just super cool and definitely feels new. All right, with that, let's move on to some hardware. Uh, I know this will get um, get Jose all lit up. Uh, so there's a post on Reddit that I ran across, and every so often I run across a post that just makes me giggle. Uh, this one reminds me back to years ago um, when when uh, Rowdy, Mike, and Nathy looked at me. We were discussing uh, Vive wireless modules, high bandwidth wireless modules, and I I, I said. No feckin' way I'm ever putting that thing on my head and getting brain cancer. No, thank you. <laughs> and ever since that point, anytime anything kind of went that way, they'd say I was wearing tinfoil. Well, it's not just me who's wearing tinfoil anymore. No, your Wi-Fi 6E router uh, can also wear tinfoil in what we call a Faraday box. <laughs> so this poster basically said that the only way they could get their 6E router to behave was to cover it in aluminum foil. <laughs> Redditor Lunch and Dinner said, 
I wish I was joking. This is the only way I got it to work without stuttering. The range is extremely short and it's very sensitive. But when it does work, whoosh, it's smooth as hell. Uh, so basically what's what's happened is um, because I think Adam and Jose won't be able to get a chance to see this, we should probably do a thing where we share these links uh, with everybody. I'll try to do that on the fly now going on from here. Is th and, and actually maybe Adam can help me out there. Just post it to the group if you would, the image. Um, basically there's a router with all its antenna uh, surrounding the router. And over the head of it oh is like days. a hood, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like a, a hood that, of foil. I, I don't know, but like, that's not a Faraday cage. Like. No, it's not a Faraday you know, cage. Not, you know what this for? I don't that, know, that looks I don't like my sandwich insensitive. box. Like. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to sound insensitive, but uh, well, oh, man, I forgot what it's called, but it's like a customary, I think it's like a religious thing that people that they do it under the Christmas tree, the nativity, I think it's called. Oh, it's nativity like, scene. Oh, the, <laughs> nativity scene. It's isn't like it, the birth isn't of it baby so router. It, like, <laughs> isn't it even so that it, like, I don't know, like, 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 works like a mirror where it like reflects the yeah. signal off or something yeah. like that. That's exactly it. So, um, yeah. in terms of transmission and the way that this uh, would be best served would be if it was in a dish form uh, to collect the waves and essentially make them semi coherent and bounce in a direction. So this guy is actually a uh, guy or gal. Actually, I don't know. Lunch and dinner is yeah. a great name. Uh, but but is trying to basically overcome a wall between the router. And play space, and so trying to punch through just a single wall um, <laughs> by focusing the beams and getting them punched through the wall to the other side to the Quest Three operating oh, a man. 6E. I hope there's like a wireless, uh, a wireless like transmitting <laughs> engineer listening to this because I, I I wish it could be inside of the the mind of the person that designed this because. I think that he's imagining like a huge cone of wireless just bouncing out of the box. Like he really, like he really thinks that's what's happening here. It's like, oh man! I if would... anything, he just cut down the bandwidth by like fifty percent and just no, made oh, it. Absolutely! <laughs> Can you imagine the engineering team, the product manager behind this router? Like if they see this, when they see this, they're gonna have a boozy lunch and they're gonna go home early. Because back in hell, this is not what you want for oh, your product. Oh man! Oh lord! That is. Oh, that's so that's so funny. So that's your comic relief for this show. Um, <laughs> with that, let's move on to the what I like to call the the stinky well or MetaQuest updates. So version okay. fifty nine launched um, or is in gradual rollout over the last couple of weeks. Um, the first feature that grabbed my eye was YouTube Live Chat. As a live streamer, um, this is a feature that. Um, it, it's important for someone who's starting off and wants to share with their friend, family and friends, and they do that via casting or a Chromecast device or something like that, just to get it up on the wall and share it with friends, get the audio out there and stuff. But if you want to share with an audience who's across the world, years ago, like with the Oculus Go and some of the earlier headsets, the first Quest, you could stream to like Facebook at like 320p. I mean, it was terrible. It was total shite. Um, at least now we finally got a version of live chat. It's just YouTube. Twitch hasn't been announced or, or in there. Kick is also another one that's up and coming. Um, but for YouTube, you know, streamers, they could cast to their, uh, they can at least cast to their computer and get a stream going from their computer, laptop, or PC, for example. Um, and then with that, you also have a floating YouTube live chat chat window so you can see messages as they're coming in read them interact with your audience how this all composites together and looks for someone who's watching i don't know i think you will see the person see the chat in their screen so it is in the way of the scene or integrated in the scene uh which for me personally the last thing i want in my immersive vr experience is a floating chat window but then again, I have a nice coder wife who coded me a text-to-speech bot who does that for me. So I do it in audio. Um, so this is great for people starting out. And I think that's why I wanted to highlight it here. So glad that's there. Um, means hopefully that they will continue to do more. Give us some other options. Do they options. let you anchor that window too? Or is it Don't. only floating? I haven't tested. There, there are other creators okay. who've tested it at this point. Um, and I'm sure people will put videos out on this. So, you know. 
week and a half from from now when this when this airs, uh, feel free to check those videos yeah. out. YouTube live chat out in version fifty nine for MetaQuest. Uh, two other things came out that I would uh, suggest you want to pay attention to uh, with. The age drop to now 10 years old, down from 13, uh, super parental supervision enhancements are also coming. So Meta's got a utility that's called Family Center that helps parents supervise and control. And the opt-in is either the parent can opt in from the child account uh, or the child can actually opt in to say, hey, I want this person to kind of look after me. And <laughs> Give me supervision. Would a child ever? <laughs> yeah. What kid does that, right? <laughs> Let me just enroll myself to <laughs> child security. Hello, Poindexter. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But you know that kid I, exists yeah. and he gets bullied at oh, school, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would definitely be bullying that kid. <laughs> oh, no. I, would be, I would be 100% making – I would make fun of that kid right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are in the future. All right. So, and that's parental supervision. And the third thing, and this is the one that tickled me the absolute most, uh, just a couple of weeks after the Quest relaunched, we now have a software patch for battery extension. So uh, I think we've all experienced um, the battery dropouts of Quest 3, particularly if you cast from the device or stream from it via screen copy like I do. Um, you probably get less than two hours. I think my average at the moment is somewhere between one, one hour 45 and one hour 50 when I'm casting, which doesn't feel like a lot of time. Um, I'm sitting out on my shows a lot, like having the thing charge while I talk to my audience and wait for this thing to come back to life. So yeah, it's annoying and I'm trying to find a way to engineer that for myself, but at least meta have, acknowledged this and jumped to it. You'll have to have jumped to it pretty quickly, or maybe they had this as a, if they notice the batteries shit, then we'll just drop <laughs> this thing out. Um, which is actually what Jose was speaking about last podcast, which is the balancing act between yeah. physical constraints, uh, the current draw, particularly of MR, which is getting a lot of attention, uh, which it should on this headset. Um, and so you'll be able to toggle essentially between, um, having a higher active battery life or having higher performance in your apps. If you're more of a short term or short attention span power user. Um, but I, I do wonder if this is going to land us in a place where there's like a, an unhappy medium between the two where you're like, I don't get enough battery life and I don't get enough performance. Um, <laughs> I hope that's not going to be the case. I hope I'll be able to find somewhere where I'm happy and the same is true for everybody else who's a new, you know, Quest 3 buyer. But I, I, I would say that if there's one characteristic of the device right now that stands out as a negative, definitely it's battery. Uh, battery has been the biggest um, problem uh, that I have yet to over overcome. And as I said, I, I end up swapping devices. I haven't yet swapped back to a Quest 2, so at least that's saying something. But um, have... Adam, in particular, have you noticed uh, Quest 3 and its battery life? Is, is it starting to get annoying for you, or are you fine with it? Um, well, I feel like it it will annoy me once I get a better head strap. Like, right now, the amount of time that I can spend in it, because I, I kind of get, like I said, it's gets tight in the back of my head. Um, it's oh. like, by the time the battery's gone, it's a good time for me to rest my face uh, anyway, but I feel like once I get the third party, um, you know, accessories for it and I'll be able to spend more time in the headset, then yeah, I'll be like, man, I don't want to be, it's like I'm just wired all over again. Cause it works great when I've got my cable and then I plug it into like a <laughs> wall charger, but I, that's kind of defeats the purpose. Right. So yeah, right. It yeah. doesn't annoy me yet, but it will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And actually even the head strap, like I have, it's weird. I have days where I really like the soft strap and there's days when I'm like, yeah, I get what people are saying. You know, like it, it, it just, I flip back and forth. Um, I still would not throw away the, the soft strap. Definitely not. Uh, I use it too often and it's very comfortable. Um, when you're lying down, when you're just using it quickly, it definitely transports more easily, you know. So I'm still glad it's the default, but um, I do think most people are going to end up with a, with a secondary, uh, a second strap, you know. Uh, okay, so those are it. So YouTube live chat, parental supervision, and a battery extension from Boz. Boz did host a... Uh, a kind of another Q&A as he likes to do. I won't go into the details of that, but you can look it up uh, if you're interested. Uh, finally, I wanted to talk a little bit. I know last time we, we touched a little bit on Ghostbusters. Uh, I saw Nathy put a video out, which was interesting. I like catching up with uh, our old pod mate. Uh, and he, uh, he basically said that the, um, well, overall, the kind of look and feel of the game was, was decent. He thought that the gameplay was quite a bit repetitive. Mm -hmm. Um... And I don't know if it was maybe his um, 
<laughs> it's godforsaken bright orange wellies getting to his brain. But whichever way the game goes when it comes out, whether people enjoy it or whatever, I don't want to labor on it. But um, I, I suppose personally, like I felt that the, I felt that our experience in Horizon, right, kind of satiated my need for a spooky game. Now I'm not a Oktoberfest kind of guy. Oktoberfest is beer, so I'm. I'm just gonna <laughs> I was going to say that, uh, that's <laughs> wrong. I am a, I'm a fan of that. I'm totally the scariest a fan of thing that. is getting drunk. <laughs> but the whole like spooky skeletons kind of Oktoberfest, like every creator out there needed to do all like Halloween themed videos. I've never really signed up to that. Um, I'm curious, Adam. I mean, obviously you have uh, you came out in cosplay in the last uh, in the last session, and now we're into November podcasting, but. Uh, Halloween is that a uh, is that something that from a content perspective like I, I haven't checked are you spookifying all of your content or do you just you don't care not this year normally I like to but just because the quest 3 came out so close to Halloween and then it's like there's just you know so many regular <laughs> regular games coming out I just didn't have time I would have liked to cover more scary stuff but it was just like no with with the you know, vacation coming up at the end of this month or having had happened already, depending on when you look at it. Uh, I just, yeah. I just didn't have time. So I, I am kind of bummed out about bummed. it, but I mean, yeah, Vampire the Masquerade's kind of vampire spooky. And then you had Seventh Guest, which is, you know, Haunted Mansion spooky, like not scary, scary, but in the And there were quality the season, titles, actually. Yeah. So we've actually had some pretty, normally we get a load of shite. Like you yeah. get such bad stuff. So we'll have to see how, you know, Christmas turns out. I don't think there's any Thanksgiving themed, um, <laughs> Thanksgiving themed well, VR games. I, I think that's very specific. Yet. Well, it's hard you to, you guys, yeah, Jose's like, Wild Turkey Extravaganza VR coming out on Thanksgiving Day. We'll detail <laughs> well, in, in Canada, you guys already had your Thanksgiving, so that's just weird, we right? Did. You're like, okay, let's well, celebrate we American I mean, well, wouldn't you? Wouldn't, <laughs> yeah, oh, you had double Thanksgiving? Yeah. I fucking doubled up every year. It's like, oh, Thanksgiving 1 and Thanksgiving 2. <laughs> Guess I gotta eat same twice. Thing with, um, <laughs> same thing with the first of the first of July. Like we get first of July, then we get fourth of July. Fireworks <laughs> double. You know, it's great. We should do that here. I don't know so. why in America then we don't just celebrate everybody uh, everybody else's Thanksgivings and Fourth of July is. But you know what? I will say Fourth of I July, like big ego. People That's are why. putting yeah. fireworks off in <laughs> June, so I don't know. It's a it's a month long thing here. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we don't have more for my my puppy's sake. My dog doesn't like uh, yeah, not, not right. the puppy actually, but my my dog. Yeah, she yeah. she hates fireworks. Yeah. It might have something to do with the fact that we had a spinner that I nailed to a shed in Scotland, and I lit it up, and we held her in place, and it went off like oh, a demonic portal. Oh, oh my and, god! Because we were trying to train her that fireworks were okay, uh. and then she panicked. We let her go. She ran to the house, all the way upstairs under a bed. And like was panting heavily for like two hours. Yeah, so. that'd, that'd do it. You, you're the kind of dad like when you ca catch your kids smoking, it's like now you're gonna smoke 15 packs yeah. of cigarettes. Yeah, like, you're gonna learn. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah, we we were trying to ease her up, and she was kind of doing okay with the small ones, and then yeah, no, did not like the spinner. <laughs> oh, so God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we broke our dog. Uh, yeah, so that aside, um, Ghostbusters, by this point, people will have played and enjoyed and all that. So I won't go into that uh, too much. But with the spooky season now officially over, it's on to explosives. Well, hey, uh, I gotta love the season of blowing things up. Now, Americans might not understand this, but in the UK, we had what's called Guy Fawkes Day, where you celebrate a terrorist and you blow shit up. Uh, it's wonderful, uh, especially because the weather's usually miserable. I remember being out in my garden, like it's dark, it's rainy. You're literally sinking fireworks into mucky soil and then shooting them off, uh, running squidgily back to safety, yeah, that like blowing fireworks holiday. off. It is <laughs> well, a great holiday. need to bring that to the States. Guy Fox Day. So look it up if you don't know Guy Fox. Thought I'd give a little tip of the top hat uh, to the, our friends the in the UK. Vendetta is based on something yep. about that, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Oh. Guy Fox, right? Yeah. Remember, remember the fifth of November. That's it. Oh man. The gunpowder <laughs> yeah. treason and plots. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. That's that, that's a worthy film to watch again. Um, or or the comic book. The comic book is also good. Yeah, the comic book is actually amazing. excellent. I remember yeah. checking that out. Uh, so with that, that's our that's our news reel. I don't have any main things for this show. We thought we would keep it nice and light for you. Um, they are in the future, looking out for our, our future friends. Uh, but but next up, Jose, you can go ahead and tell us if there are any games that are nice. You know, any games like Adam. 
but surely not that nice. Impossible. No games for y'all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no games are good, guys. Um, so I actually wanted to pick two games that actually are games I'm actually quite looking forward to personally. I wanted to that that's there's so many games that we have mentioned and. So the first one we have is Demio Battle, um, mm. finally releasing on November 9th. Um, this is the action role-playing classic game, no, Demio, but this is their competitive term, I guess, uh, PvP version uh, approach to Demio, which is player versus player, up to four players, 1v1 and 2v2. I don't think you can do 2v1, but uh, yeah, so they, it's a... Uh, <laughs> you into that? Uh, you into that? Oh, like... dude. Hey, listen. <laughs> Some people like a top challenge, right? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. Um, but, yeah, that's Demio, uh, November 9th. Um, no price. Actually, yes, uh, $19.99 US. Uh, they do have a pre-order price uh, of $17.99. That's about 16 50 pounds. Pre-order, $14.85 <laughs> uh, uh, pounds for pre-order. And yeah, that's uh, Demio Battle. And after that, uh, I don't know if you guys have tried uh, Demio Battle yet. Yes, I have. I absolutely have. But I have certain reactions, which I will share next podcast. But right now, I haven't tried it. But I will have tried it by the time this airs. So <laughs> if I happen to be in chat, ask me about how Demio Battle's working. Or check <laughs> out my possible. video if I have one. I don't know. It's possible. <laughs> yeah. So and up after that, we have Assassin's Creed Nexus VR. Um that releases on November 16th of $39.99 US, 33 pounds. Uh, it's a VR um, remaster, or I guess a revisioning of the uh, traditional Assassin's Creed games. Uh, I saw I, I saw the TwitchCon uh, Assassin's Creed uh, showcase. They actually had Tech Minju and oh, yeah. Fox Uchiha uh, homies. Shout out to them showcasing that, which was really cool. But also... The game was awesome. Um, yep. I, I really uh, spoke to them a little bit. I was like, hey, did, did you actually enjoy the game? Or were you just, you know, showing it off for meta? And, and they both of them said, hey, it's actually quite fun. They they mentioned a few uh, popular uh, sandbox uh, games. Uh, I don't need to mention them. Everybody knows that the big sandbox uh, sword-style uh, mm -hmm. VR games are in only one headsets. And uh, they started making some interesting comparisons when it comes to combat. Mm. And... Also, the, the pseudo-fake uh, uh, open world uh, is actually something that was not expecting from an Assassin's Creed VR wait. game. Pseudo-fake open world. What? Yeah, it's similar to like what uh, Adam mentioned oh, like, with Vampire okay. the Masquerade, where it feels open world, uh, but it's really not. Uh, I think similar uh, tactics are being used in Assassin's Creed. Um, they it, Also, using uh, player counts, uh, where they... they, they uh, uh, Techman specifically mentioned that he was in a scene where he felt like he was actually crowded by a lot of people and navigating to the town. I was wondering and about that. That actually, yeah, he he mentioned that it felt like being bum rushed in New York City, and that that uh, I, I'm really excited to try it. So that's the the two games I wanted to to cool. uh, to mention this week because those are definitely the two games that will more than likely have some uh, experience uh, under my belt next podcast. Sounds good. Nice. Yeah. Those are those are good. So uh, with, with with that feedback, um, I'm I'm curious. So for the uh, the Assassin's Creed one, for example, kind of looking good. Mm -hmm. Is that is that tempting? I mean, Jose, it sounds like you're totally bought into that. But oh yeah, Rowdy, I'm is... a huge Assassin's Creed fan. Like Ezio's uh, story, uh, like uh, it's one of my favorite personal all time favorite game story, specifically Ezio's storyline. So being able to revisit his character in, in the games, I, I'm just so hyped for it. So good, good pick from your perspective in terms of the, oh, use of the IP. Yeah, yeah. For, for me, it's a little bit, a little bit different. I think because I'm also a huge uh, Assassin's Creed fan. Um, but like, I, I hope it's gonna be more than just like nostalgia. You know, I, I do hope that it's going to be more of a, you know, like again, like I, I I'm a little bit scared, especially because they, you know. The, the characters they've picked, they're such big stories. Like, Ezio's story is so big. You have Cassandra, which is also a very big story. Connor, and, I, yeah. and Connor's story as well. And then it's going to be... I, I hope it's not going to be just like, oh, you know, visit this world real quick. A little bit, you know, look at what you can do all. And it feels a little bit more like a tech demo than to me. And what I, mm. what I really like about the Assassin's Creed story is that you are this character. 
Because right? you literally go into, you know, being this character and then, you know, you go through the entire storyline. And now it's like, it's a little bit more like split up. Of course, maybe they've done, they've done a great job with it. I don't know. Like, but it does make me a little bit wary of like, where does this go? And uh, mm. while I would prefer to be, you know, a little bit more fixed character, new character, you know, the IP is there, you know, you don't need to visit, you know, all the characters of which the story is completely done. And then like, you know, just make something new and like make it exciting and like, you know, use all the tools you have rather than like, oh, you know, now this is how it feels to be Ezio, which I'm sure is awesome, but I think that wears God, I off want really that so soon. bad though. <laughs> but it's, the thing is, I think it's fair to say, and we've seen this a few times, when you convert from a stellar flat game and you try to imagine it in VR, it's kind of like when we used to have literally like 2D games, like a 2D Monkey Island. Exactly. Go 3D. Yeah. Right? And then you were in a 3D world. And it's like it doesn't feel the yeah. same because you've changed how I as a player interact with the game. So mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think that fandom converts across that barrier yeah. is what I'm and, saying. And, like, yeah. and for me personally as well, like, I mean, I've, I've gone, you know, Back in the beginning of VR, when there was literally like nothing to play, I've done a ton of war packs. You know, I've got a lot yeah. of slack as well when I when I was playing Fallout in VR, and I made videos on that like two years before before Fallout VR was announced, and then two years later, people were angry at me because this is not a real Fallout in VR. It's like, well, no, I mean, I did this like two years ago. There wasn't even mention of it. But anyway. Like, I've done that a lot. And it's really cool, you know. Like, for example, Bioshock Infinite, you know, awesome, fantastic game. And putting a headset on and then being in that world and looking around and being there is, is fantastic for 10 minutes. Yep. You know, like, and, and then it's like, okay, yeah, that was that was cool. And then you turn it off. And, and I, I hope that this is not going to be like that, that it's going to be like, I mean, of course, it's going to be way better than four packs. But, like, I hope it's not only going to be like, oh, you remember this character from like when you back when you played Assassin's Creed? Isn't it cool that you can now like see him and interact with him? I'm like, okay, cool, we've done this. So this is the next character. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like I, I don't, I don't really care about that. I'm gonna use an analogy here for a second because to me, what you just described is kind of like if you listen to a band's top hits album. And personally, I never, I never really like those. I want the album from start to finish like i'm not a song guy i'm an album guy i want the like the whole thing end to end and kind of what you described reminds me of the com if i was to compare grand theft auto um, and how la noir was presented so la noir when it was first in flat was a series of kind of long uh cases that you could run yeah. and all we got in vr was really like a bite-sized part of it you got driving scenes you got a robbery scene you got interaction and doubt the person scenes but it was bite-sized it was little flavors of it doom vfr did a similar thing where it wasn't the full doom that we loved it was just kind of a it was like a taster a teaser for it um, and i think it was because in part it works but yeah it doesn't satisfy you it's like candy versus dessert Right, like when you want a chocolate cake and someone gives you a bag of Skittles, you're like, eh. I don't you know, know what? Like, I'm, I'm, good. I'm, I'm good. I feel like VR versions of big IPs are kind of like Netflix miniseries of big movies. Like they're yeah. they're trying to make, and it's not necessarily, I guess, a bad thing, but they're trying to take like slices of life. Like, oh, take this big IP that you like, and now we're gonna t do a spin-off version of now you get to see through the eyes of this character that you know and love, or like, oh, see this, but in a different light from a different perspective. Yeah. It seems to be the the thing now, and it's not. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it depends on to the To me, IP. that feels very much like they don't feel like VR can hold on its own enough. And therefore, right. they need to go to these, yeah. like, you know, and, and and I don't agree with that. Like, I, I think VR Agreed. is strong enough to hold on its own. And, like, if you make a new story, you know, I don't care that it's Assassin's Creed. I mean, of course I care it's Assassin's <laughs> Creed. Who am I kidding? But, like, the... You can do enough with that, I think. You don't have to go back to Ezio to make it cool. Like, that's what I think, yeah. I agree 100% because I, I, Horizon is an example. And I know, Adam, you're a big Horizon fan as well. You were before I was. Um, but, like, when I did, when I played Horizon 
throughout on PS5, and I just fell in love with that whole world and Aloy, and the, the whole thing was just amazing. Oh, that, I think about Horizon then, World for some reason. I was like, I didn't... Uh, oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I should have <laughs> like, How oh, dare you put what? that on me? Adam looks so offended. <laughs> okay, now, oh, yeah, yeah, all right. Now I get what you mean. I was so confused. I was like, Horizon World? It yeah, is that's fair. It that's is how dare you? Fair. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, because I saw it in your face and I was like, oh, you like Horizon, don't you? <laughs> so, yes, Aloy, you know, alligators, all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> no, they're not called alligators. It's not coming to me. <laughs> but the point I was making is that um, when, I, when I modded that game and played it that way on PC, and it was the full fat experience, but I was in the world. And like, I wasn't worried about motion sickness or whatever. And I had the controls and I could take down these massive enemies. Like it wasn't as great as the engagement that you get in Call of the Mountain, the made for VR experience, but it was damn good. And just like Alien Isolation, even if there's some clunky kind of not made for VR menus or whatever, like I still want to see studios. I know, I know Rowdy thinks to some extent it's like poisoning the well a bit. I still want to see studios take a AAA title, do the best job of they can to convert it to VR, and give us the full feckin' thing end to end. Because yeah, if you like, haven't played that thing, like, like and not... you do it in VR, it's it's yeah. great. Like Subnautica, for example, yeah, wasn't it? It was a perfect but like, example. I... But like commit to it. to it. Like don't like it. don't don't yeah. do like you know. Oh, uh, and you know, you remember that level that everybody laughed of this game. You can outdo this one level in VR. I'm... Oh, no. Tomb Raider. I think it's also important to note that I think what what's happening with VR and all of the these tests and, and attempts at creating you know VR focused conversions or or vice versa is the reality that we are starting to 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 learn that maybe there is a better way to play certain games, right? I I've been playing. I, I mentioned it earlier that I've been playing a lot of 2D flat games in a VR space. Mm. That is. Has it's turning into my favorite form of playing VR. We have been, especially because of the mm. Quest Three, we've been we've been focused talking about the powers of mixed reality and how you can have a virtual screen and, and mix into your physical world. But what about a two D screen in your virtual world? Oh, right, it, it creates a level of immersion of concentration, unlike anything I've I, I've, I've done as somebody who deals with very wild uh, wild card <laughs> ADHD. You know, sometimes it, 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 there's value of having, you know, a, a the, the screen that I want to focus on virtually, you know, following my eyesight, no matter where I'm looking at, and then having, you know, virtual bliss around me. It, it's, you it's, will I, I, love Mario. <laughs> exactly. You will, you will concentrate in one way, shape, or form. It, yeah. I, I, I actually, a lot of people resonated with that. I think I mentioned it here, but it, it truly mm -hmm. is noise canceling for the eyes. Um, and, and I think that uh, 2D gaming in virtual spaces is probably, and that's what we're seeing with Valve. <laughs> that is exactly what Valve's moving towards. They're going to convert all of their Steam library into a way for you to play them in VR. And it's, I, I think I'm more excited about that over anything because we're not thinking about reflections on a screen. Mm. What happens when you bring those kinds of reflections to a virtual space? And now you have, you know, literally, you know, Mario, for example, where the clouds are popping out of the virtual screen and it looks like 3D. And every time you get an achievement, the screen shakes, fireworks behind it. All of these weird yeah. variables or, or, or uh, uh, candy to, to the visual experiences, I'm, I'm excited for it. So, The other thing, like, like what you were doing where you took, um, you know, you were basically enjoying a, a two-dimensional experience, but in, in VR. I find myself drawn back to those I'll call them experiments every so often. Like, for example, virtual link cable to PSVR 2, being able to play Doom Eternal on this, like, awesome 120 hertz OLED panel. I mean, things like that are just, like, really fun if you like tinkering and seeing what your gadgets can do together. Um, but I just, I don't know, I, I, feel like, uh, I feel like all of this conversation around upgrades, dedicated builds that are very costly for a team, for something that might not pay off like the, re the return on investment is, is rarely there for vr and I, I recognize that i feel like this talk a year from now maybe two years from now we'll all be dust in the wind because we'll have models that can help programmers to convert an existing two-dimensional world with all of its assets into a virtual space that we can just go and explore and i think our hardware is going to be at a place where it'll be comfortable to wear 
and we can literally just dive into whatever we want. Maybe even making up worlds for ourselves, almost like if you've always had the the spirit and the creative nature of a game creator, but never wanted to learn to code or didn't want to, you know, contribute in a more like mainstream development way. I think your day your day is coming, you know, and I think it's coming pretty darn fast. And Rowdy keeps us all abreast of changes in that respect. And I thank him for that because it keeps me excited. Every podcast, he kind of pulls me back into the world is changing, Zim. You got to pay attention. And I, I'm a guy who like, you know, it's that old adage of like, once you're over 35, you're like, I'm set in my ways. I know my music. I know the things I like, blah, blah, blah. I try to keep myself fresh, but in fact, I'm falling so far behind. It's not silly. Um, and Rowdy does keep me aware of how quickly the world is changing. So, um, well, thank you for the attention and all of that. Um, chat, we are going to wrap this up. If you managed to get this far on the podcast and still not realize that this is a re-recording, well, then you'll you'll, you'll now understand <laughs> this is a pre-recording. Sorry, not a re-recording. Well, it is. It's a pre-recorded re-recording of a snipped up, cut up. <laughs> oh, geez. Now you, you broke my brain. Somebody's, somebody's going to be listening to this and say, wait, so are they in the past recording for the future from the past? <laughs> <laughs> we all took time machines. Um, so yeah, chat, our love to you. We'll be back for a live show the next one around. Um, if you're feeling blue, at least you can say, you know, nice things about Adam and chat and naughty things about Rowdy, please. Uh, oh, nice good. Um, I love now. that. Love yeah, naughty. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the F reality podcast, it runs in two week chunks of wonder every other Saturday on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, this cast goes live at 10 AM Pacific. 11 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. in the UK. Uh, for our listeners out there who don't need to see us to love us, uh, keen and lazy alike, uh, we have SoundCloud, Spotify, and iTunes. Heck yeah. Uh, if this was good for you, then it was good for us too. Thank you for being a cool audience, uh, for sticking tuned to F Reality, and um, we'll definitely catch you on the, the next one. This was maybe the shortest podcast ever. Maybe. Uh, not, uh, no, when it's pretty long. <laughs> 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 we'll see once you once you cut all the fat out. You okay, know, so. uh, sure, all good. sure. All right, crew, let's bow out and take our leave. Bye bye. bye. bye.